Okay, a little bit of a change. They make duct tape in uh, lots of different colors, so I might as well take advantage of it. Let's see. In thick areas, I I do the alternate flaking or the zigzag technique. using the uh, bulb of percussion from the previous flake as a platform. You can do this with pressure also. I'm going to do most of this point with indirect. Just preparing for a strike here. To remove this mass. I encountered this lump here so it didn't go very far. But I can get that from the other side. The ends are fairly thin now so I'll start working more in the middle. Send a flake across this ridge here. Again, still working near the ends until I get to the very middle. That one, see, obsidian is good. Obsidian is good for this kind of thing. It travel from edge to edge here. Whereas on uh, chert or flint, it doesn't do it very often. Or when it does, it'll remove some of the other side. See, there's another good one where it didn't go all the way across, it just stopped near the edge. So what I'm doing now is I'm working on this flatter side for two reasons. One, to you know finish flattening it. It also moves the edge closer to this lump on this side. So I just move this edge closer and this edge is going closer. As I do a pass across, the edge will be turned toward the, uh, the lump on this side. And at the same time, I get to uh, flatten it. Very nice edge to edge flaking. I'm going to go a little faster and comment less. Just so I can get in the zone here.
are some imperfections that I have to watch out for. So what I'm going to do is I'll remove this large mass first and then concentrate next on this damaged or this uh, unpredictable area. There's a crack in here, strange looking crack. So I'm just going to, instead of trying to drive a long flake, I'm just going to trim the edge and see if I can clip that off. Yeah, so I just took a shallow, um, I, not a shallow, but a short flake, just to clip off that irregularity there. And now I can probably shoot a I'll shoot a flake across this way to remove this, try to move this or some of this mass here from this side. Again, there's some weird cracks in here, so I'll get to be careful with that. There's a natural platform here, so I'm going to just catch onto that and just try to remove some of this mass here. I think I can work around it. As you can see, there's, there's irregularities in that stone. There's interior cracks. Turning the edge. still attacking. I'm attacking from either side depending on where I see the best advantage. A lot of times the reason why I don't comment is because let's say this point will break on the next strike. All that previous commentary I can't use. So I gotta make another video and try to remember the commentary. So in a lot of my videos there isn't any commentary because it's just easier for me. Especially if I break one during the video. Now that I've got a lot of time invested in the commenting on this one, I've got to be extra especially careful not to break it. <laughs> we'll see. If I don't want to take a long flake, I'll just change the angle on it and pop off a short flake. Because I know there's a uh, defect here. I don't want to try to drive into it. I just want to try to brush away what's in front of it so I can see what's there. So at this point, I'm not worried about thinning at all because the thinning process 
I'm pretty used to it by now. I don't have to uh, think about it too much and I can do with the thinning. Relatively easy now with experience. More easily. Again, I'm thinning the this tip. As this gets thinner, I have to thin the ends as well. I have to be careful not to remove too much material here just in case these cracks are deep. If these cracks are deep on this side, I'm going to have to use material from this side to complete the point. So I can't be removing too much at this stage from this flatter side. But I do want to dress it up. I don't want to have a lot of step fractures or questionable areas like I'm not sure what's going on here if that's just a, uh, a contour of the flake or if it's an internal crack but we'll see At this stage, a pressure flaker will affect it significantly, so I'm going to take a pressure flaker and dress up the edges. And what I mean by that is a pressure flaker can send flakes almost all the way across without much effort on something of this size. Or, you know, handle any type of uh, issue I have with dressing up the edge at this size of the point. If it was larger I would probably still be using the indirect tool. But I'm just going to dress the edge so I can be more careful with the flake removals with the indirect tool. This is just in preparation for more indirect. Nothing fancy. Just pulling flakes off kind of an aggressive pressure technique not really paying attention to the uh, platforms just pressing off flakes turning the edge that way and trying to Straighten it somewhat. Now, if I need to, I can press off a long flake with the pressure flaker. Or if I feel I need, you know, I could take advantage of a ridge or something and remove a, and remove a flake that would help me. I'll do that at this point. But it's mainly just pulling flakes off the edge so I can turn it. Now at this stage of the preform, this is a lot thicker than I normally would have at this stage. 
uh, with uh, with chert, let's say. Here's a preform made of heat treated chert. It's a lot wider, a lot thinner. This is more narrow and a lot thicker. This is so so I would reduce the breakage this way. I'm not going to do the much thinning on it until the final pass. We'll see how that works. There's still some cracking in there, but it doesn't appear to be very deep. Just brushing with the abrader in the opposite direction. That direction I want to take flakes off in this direction, so I'm going to brush it in that direction. And this edge needs to be slightly sharp. If it's too dull, I'll have to put too much force into it. Okay, now on this pass I'm going to hope to clear off all the other major defects and then I'll do another trimming pass with pressure and then the final uh, flake scar pattern with indirect and then do the final retouch with uh, another type of pressure flaker okay let's see so I'm going to remove most of the service defects here with this pass hopefully Okay, so that got rid of most of the uh, areas I was worried about. There's still a couple areas here that show crushing and some original defects in the material. Right here is one area, and right here is the other area. Not too worried about this area here that looks like an island that might develop because it's obsidian. I could run a flake easily from some other location to uh, knock that off. 
Now, if it was a hard material, a raw shirt or something, and there was an island developing in the middle like that, I would probably attack that now because it's difficult to run long flakes to remove something like that on a hard, a really hard material. But on obsidian, it's not that difficult. Okay, so what I'm going to do is work on these two areas, try to clear those, and maybe uh, remove some flakes to clear up whatever that is there. already 21 minutes now I drove flakes into that island because I, I knew I can clear it from the other side I was just concerned about sure this area has no defects okay I'm gonna attack that now here So I don't see any major defects anymore. I'm going to uh, take the pressure flaker, dress up the edge once again, abrade the edge all the way, do a final pass with the indirect, and then do some notching, and then do the final retouch. Obviously, I don't think exactly that way every time I do a point. But uh, that's basically the way the thought process goes. I, I pay attention to the different stages now more than I used to. And that's partly because of what I've been reading and also because of the different point styles that I've been doing, like Cody Complex which has a very uh, a very heavy leaning toward pre edge preparation so that's helped me in my flint napping to take time to do the edge preparation
Now I hardly ever use a notched pad anymore. And sometimes as you're driving flakes, right where the uh, surface of the point meets the pad, the flake will terminate. That's one of the drawbacks. But I'd rather have terminations like this than a snapped point by using a notched pad. And what I mean by notch pad is a pad with a like a channel or a, a ditch or something in the middle so the flakes will release freely without touching anything. But I've broken many many points on notched pads so I don't use them anymore. It's been a long time since I've used one. I need to get in the zone here. I'm not doing this very well. Okay, so I'm going to do a thinning pass. The, the resulting point is not going to be really, really thin, but I'm being uh, cautious because of the, uh, the video. But I'll do a thinning pass, which will be the, uh, the pass that will show the final flake scar pattern. Okay. What I was doing, I was just looking for areas that, that I think I might need to attack first before doing the thinning. 
but it looks pretty good. And this is just collateral flaking. And I'm not sending the flakes all the way across, so there's going to be maybe a, a slight median ridge here, but it's not going to be pronounced. Okay, then the other side. Probably should do that with pressure. So I need to hit that really hard now to get rid of that mass near the tip. So I'll finish that with pressure. So I don't have to use the unpredictability of the indirect percussion. To be very careful with that end thinning. So easy to snap off the tip. When you strike the end, and the vibrations through the material sometimes will just pop the tip off. Okay, to put notches in, I'm going to need to thin this area quite a bit, so I'm going to. Uh, I think I'm going to make this concave on the base here so I can do that. I'll show you what I mean in a minute here. See, when I'm making this concavity, I'm actually turning the edge this way, which will allow me to drive some thinning flakes. Still some booger areas right there, but then it's good enough. They might clear up with some pressure. Okay. Just very light taps. Doesn't take much.
and these notches are going to be relatively low so I'm going to uh, prepare a little bit of the edge so that I can drive some flakes to thin the area where I'll be notching Now sometimes you have strange things happen. Th that last flake was right here. Here's some remnant there. Um, but what it did was it contacted a, a ridge or something here and it another flake started to travel and it almost took off the opposite edge right here. So this flake should have terminated right about here but since it was a raised area where it was butting up against it had enough force to continue now I don't know what you would call those types of flakes but I I would tend to call that like a secondary overshot where it isn't the original flake that overshoots but a continuation of it anyway okay Let's see if I can get this little boogery spot out of here and then do some notching. Good enough. Okay. And uh, I'll be using this notching tool here. It's just an ice pick that's been filed down to a, a flat head. Start the notches. to give myself an idea where they're going to be. I'm going to punch the first first major flakes. Just so I have a nice negative bulb there to continue. That's a theory anyway. You can see that negative bulb in there, make it easier for the next flakes. I can't really get that with pressure. Not as easily. I'll have I have to uh, set up a set up my hand and my pad in such a way to press those off. But with the indirect, I can just uh, do it quickly. Okay. It's 
square off the bottom of the notch. And then take another punch flake from both sides. Okay, I'll dress it up now, drive those, or, you know, crunch those notches in a little bit further. Not too much. I have to be careful not to uh, snap it when I'm doing this pressure. Now with a sharper tool I could drive the notches further and uh, these are a little sloppy because they've got some crushing on the at the ending there but I don't mind that for my own purposes. If I want to make a reproduction then I'd be more careful with that but this is good enough for the video. So the notches are done, now I'm going to dress the edge with the final retouch and that will be done. Forty two minutes. Now I like to use this tool because it'll it snaps off flakes cleanly with no crushing. If you uh, do it this way, there's a little bit of flex in that and there's not much area of contact, so you're not gonna crush the edge. It just kind of pops those flakes off. Kind of difficult to see. I was looking through the viewfinder and it was difficult to see through there. If I have a hard time seeing it, you probably you guys will probably have a hard time seeing it. Now this is that area where I was hesitating to use indirect on, so I'm just going to walk it in a little bit to turn the edge and use one of these negative bulbs of percussion to get a platform, a good platform to peel that off. I might be able to catch some of it just like this. Yeah, I was able to catch some of that step with the edge of the tool, but to finish out, I'm going to press off a couple flakes.
paper is kind of annoying, so let's see here. Now there's some thick areas on the edge. I'll try to drive some flakes inward a little bit by changing the angle. So I'm not just peeling flakes off, short flakes, I'm trying to drive a little ways. Just where there's a bulky area. If you drive a lot of long flakes at this point, you'll interfere with the flakes car pattern. Which is okay if you don't care about that sort of thing, but if you want to preserve your flake scar pattern, you, you don't want to remove long flakes at this stage. But I'm trying to get rid of the thick area in here. I think I just messed up my symmetry. still thicker than I would like so what I'm going to do is use a little bit more indirect and that'll be it it's, it's a little thick in here uh, this is fine down here and I like to use indirect for thinning because pressure usually usually snaps the tip off. Okay. And I'm only gonna be only be driving thin flakes with the indirect. So not much force required.
Okay, I'll quit messing with it before I take too much off. That last flake on that side was a little bit large. Uh, it's really easy to take way too much off at this stage. But it looks like it worked out pretty good. I'm satisfied. That's it.